Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and today I have a get ready with me where I am doing some first impressions. And so I do have, let me reach over here and grab it. I do have the tier tier cushion foundation. This is the red compact one. So this is obviously what I have on my face. I did two different applications and I kind of let you guys know what I think about it, I show you guys what it's looking like, or at least try to explain, because I know the lights do a lot of things with kind of washing out some texture. So I put this on my face and we go over what my thoughts are on this. And then I also, I am ill prepared because I actually turned off everything and realized that I did not film an intro to this video, but I do a palette bingo with the new Natasha Denona Ruxa palette. So obviously this is the look that I ended up doing, but definitely you guys were going to have to wait to see what shades end up getting pulled out of this. So if you guys want my first impressions, kind of an application, get ready with me with the Ruxa palette and also putting on the red cushion compact tier tier foundation, then stick around. We are getting into bare faced Erin and actually with a wonderful cameo from Malcolm that is coming up right now. What's up, dude? Hi, baby. Hi, baby. You Mr. Malcolm's. Mr. Malcolm's. Hi, baby. I know. You just had some treats. Do you want to go lay down? I put your bed over there. Oh, I know. You just want cuddles right now. Washburn, stop being jealous. That's our big boy. I know. Hey, you want to go get in the bed? Good boy. Lay down. Oh, that's my good boy. Starting off the video strong with a cameo from Mr. Malcolm. All right, so hopefully All Done Up Me has introduced this video, and so I promised you guys this one. So as they're over there getting tangled in the curtains, hold on, Malcolm fell down. Let me go readjust him on the bed and get him comfortable. All right, now that he is comfortable, I did promise you guys a video where I was going to do a try on first impression, maybe wear test if I can come back and kind of touch base with you guys, but on the tier tier foundation. And then also I was going to do a look with the new Natasha Denona Ruxa palette. And so I showed you guys this one in my no pan left behind. I have not touched this at all. So this will also be my first time reaching into this palette, but I have all of my normal skincare on, including dog hair because always, but including my sunscreen, and then I already did put on my e.l.f. Jelly Pop Primer because I want that to set down a little bit and get a little bit tacky. So with the Tier Tier Cushion Foundation, I did get it in 17C Porcelain, which actually feels like a really good match for me. Typically, I am mixing my foundations a little bit, so me going straight into this one without mixing anything is kind of weird for me, but it's a cushion foundation, so I can't mix anything into it. I am going to try to do half my face with the little sponge that comes with it, and then I do have one of my DSMD shop sponges washed and wet with a bunch of the water wringed out of it. But we have our cushion foundation, so that is what we're looking like right there. I feel like this is also a good size to get my sponge into. So we're going to do half my face with the included sponge and half my face with this sponge. Now I know that a regular wet sponge is going to soak up more products. So I can expect maybe a sheerer um, application on one side over the other. And let's see. So this side of my face is acting up a little bit. I have some healing spots going on. So I'm gonna do this side with the actual sponge that comes with it because I want maybe a little bit more coverage. And then this side of my face I'll do with my wet sponge. So let me get more dog hair off my face. Now I also did Dermaplane this morning to get all of the peach fuzz off my face just to get a really smooth application. So we are going to try this out. So. I am nice and tacky from the Jelly Pop. 
and Malcolm is making his rounds around the room again. And so I am going to go into this foundation. So this blew up and it was viral. And I know that the red one, so I think they have three different, um, I guess, formulas for this foundation now, like a glowy one, a more matte one, and then a more satin one. I believe the red one is the most matte that you're going to get. So the little sponge does fit very nicely on my finger. And again, this is brand spanking new, so I've never dipped into this. So we are going to just dip our little sponge. I picked up some product and I said this side of my face was going to be okay. So we do have coverage right off the bat. So we will be blending this way out. All right, now I see what everybody was talking about with this coverage. So this does look light for me. Um, I did self tan last night with some gradual tanner. And then also um, I have a lot of redness. So usually I like to blank out my face with a fuller coverage to get the redness down. Okay, so I'm getting some marks from my fingernail. This is really small and it's kind of weird to hold it and actually, because I feel like if I'm just patting like this, it's not giving me what I want and it slips around on my finger. So I don't know if I really like the small little pad, but we'll take it up under my under eyes since it's already there. But that one little dip in as I'm spreading it out did pretty much the whole half of my face. All right. I see what you're talking about. I'm going to go back in for one little dip in and we're going to put that on my forehead and see how far I can get. I'm going to go. I don't like this. I feel like the way that I want to hold it, I'm not getting the application and coverage that I want and I end up poking myself with my fingernails. So don't know if I love and this is a mini so I know the full size one would come with a bigger applicator and a bigger sponge. But for right now with how I'm, you know, I only have the mini because I wanted to try it out before I got a full size. But that was, you know, a few dips in and that is the difference in my complexion. Now I did cover up the more red side of my face, but we can definitely see a difference between the two. And again, the color match is okay. It'll get better whenever I have, you know, the rest of my products on. I do typically have a little bit more of a lighter complexion and then I add the color back with my, um, my bronzer and things like that. But let me look up close. Is that a hair or is that something else? Let me, and again, I'm using a tacky primer, but this is the primer that I love and I know why is it showing a wrinkle in my face right there? And it's like really apparent. That's weird. That is weird. But I'm going to let this side kind of hang out and then I'm going to do it. It is looking a little bit dry on this side. Um, but again, this is the more matte foundation. Um, I am seeing if I had not shaved my face this morning, this would cling to every single piece of peach fuzz that I have um, because it does look a little bit dry. It looks a little bit dry around here where I'm having a little bit more of my like healing breakouts. Um, it looks okay on my nose, looking a little bit textured on my forehead. I am... I am not liking the texture of my skin right now, and so I'm actually considering going back to my dermatologist to talk about something. Um, I don't know. I don't want to do like a really aggressive peel, but or I don't know. I'm going to have to research the difference between like a peel or a CO2 treatment or something. Um, I have dog hair or something that's making my nose itch. So I'm not picking my nose. I'm just itching. <laughs> So leave me alone. But I really do want to try to do something about the texture of my skin. So I'm just going in with the butt round part of my sponge dipping into that foundation. And we'll see what it looks like with a wet sponge. Now, of course, I'm going to have to dip in a lot more just because this will sheer out the coverage. That is the dog hair I was looking for. Okay. 
I'm not crazy. Sometimes I feel like I like gaslight myself with dog hair because I swear I feel a dog hair, but then it's not actually there. But, all right, let's go ahead and get this. Okay, I like it better with a wet sponge because it adds a little bit of that moisture back into the formula. And so, of course the coverage is not as full as the side that I use the included sponge, but that was so much quicker. I felt like it spread out better. I didn't have to go back in with extra layers because I felt like, like I still don't like this spot right here. So I'm cheating, but I can't be having half my face look like a hot mess because I actually do need to leave the house today. So, but we're gonna leave my skin right here. I think that if you want, and of course, I'm gonna go back in with another layer. So this is how I do my makeup. I put on a layer of foundation, I let it kind of sink in and dry down, and then I'll go back over it after I'm done with my eyes. So we are gonna do my eyes next. But we do, all right, I'm gonna leave the house today because we are gonna go vote. So we have early voting in Florida, and so um, we are going to vote early just because we want to make sure that nothing gets in the way of us being able to vote by the 4th. So. I'm not going to say anything one way or the other, but if you are um, an American citizen or you have the ability to vote in America, please go have your voice heard. I don't care which side of whatever hellhole you sit on, but just go have your voice heard because that is your right as a citizen. So that is my two cents about that. But I'm going to go ahead and I think I do want to do this as a palette bingo. So I'm going to get my stuff together so that I can pick five shades out of the Ruxa palette and we will do a look that way. All right. So I have my little empty compact. So we're going to set that down here. I'm going to pull up my wheel for picking out, which one is it on? Palette bingo. So 15. Um, let's see here. I got to reset the wheel because I don't want it to exclude the ones that I picked out from my Yucca one. And so we're going to go into this palette. Now, of course, if it gives me like all mattes or all shimmers, I am going to go ahead and make, you know, a decision to pull some, uh, a combination of mattes and shimmers. But let me go ahead and see what our first choice is going to be. I'm going to do a screen recording so that you guys can see my wheel as well, but I am going to turn down the volume on this thing. So number 10. So that's actually this like raspberry red shade right there. So let me poke that one out and we will have that as shade number one. So we're going to be going a little bit dark berry. Let's see our next one. Shade 5, which is a shimmer, so that's going to be Regal right there. All right, it likes this side of the palette so far. All right, next shade is going to be shade number 1, with is, which is Dixie, which that's actually the shade that I thought might look similar to Earthshine, so I'm actually very happy we pulled that one. All right, so we need three more shades. 12. So that is this beautiful dark purple shimmer right here. All right. So we need one more matte. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is if the next one that it pulls is a... Or do I just make the decision to pull the matte that I want because I think for this color story right here the matte the orchid matte would look really good but I would end up with a darker look which I don't mind um or velour which is this matte right here so between these two I think I do want to keep it a little bit dark. So let me actually go, because again, I, if I roll another shimmer, I'm going to be basically stuck with one mat. I think I'm going to make the decision. I'm going to pull Orchid over here and we're going to keep it a little bit darker, but let me go ahead and get that one out. 
and then we can look at the full color story here. So this is what I've pulled out of the palette. And we'll put this to the side so it doesn't fall on the floor. And then this is our color story that we're working with. Very beautiful. Very excited about this. And like I said, oh, you can see my ceiling fan up there. Hello, ceiling fan. But I'm really excited about using Dixie right there as the possible alternative to Earthshine. So let me put away my poker and then we will go ahead and get into this eye look. All right, so I primed my eyes with my Milani eyeshadow primer and then I just set down my lid with a cream color. Look at the pan on this thing. So this was a full eyeshadow at the start of the year. I believe it's just a ColourPop single. Yes, this is out of the um, Stoned Vibes palette. So that was a full cream colored uh, color pop shadow at the beginning of the year. So that is a huge pan that I have in my collection, but I do typically like to use my singe brushes for eye looks. And then I also, let's see here. This is a, another singe brush. And then I do have the EO5 from Nikia Joy Cosmetics, which is a little, little blender, but it is nice and fluffy. So I like that one. And then I do have a little angled brush as well in case I want to do a little bit of a liner with these shades. So I think I'm gonna go in, like I only have our two mattes, so one of course is deeper and one's lighter. So I'm gonna go in with the lighter one first and go ahead and build that up in my inner crease. Um, there are no cream to powders in this palette. And so these are just her new matte formula, which I'm so glad that Natasha Denona has paid attention to her matte formula. And then look, that that's just a little, little dip in and then very lightly putting that on my lid and that pigment is already there. Beautiful. Um, but I am happy that she's brought out more um, different formulas in her shimmers and then of course continued to work on her matte formula but this is the EO5 from Singe. I love this tiny little blender because it gets the powder and the shadow right in my tiny little crease because I do have smaller eyes and I don't have a whole lot of space so I like that I can take this small little brush and get the color right there where I want it and keep it out of this area right here, which if you put too much darkness, or at least for me, if I put too much darkness right here, it can close off my eyes. It can make my eyes look droopier than they are. Um, but uh, what was I talking about? Oh, before I was talking about the texture of my skin. Sorry, my husband came downstairs and he was making noise and I, I will cut that part out even though I'm sure a lot of you would very much enjoy our banter that we have, but I usually cut out whenever he comes in and uh, decides to disturb me. But I'm considering doing, I'm gonna go into the darker matte now. I'm considering talking to my dermatologist about doing something about my texture. And I know that like some of the CO2 treatments and things like that, you can almost do like kind of a texture reset. Because um, I am just continuously getting more and more breakouts. And again, nobody can tell me why I am continuing to get breakouts. And I don't want to go on something like Accutane. I don't want to go on something that strong. But I don't think that my acne is bad enough to warrant doing something like an Accutane. And I also don't want to... Um, go on a medication that could possibly change my skin type. I'm okay with having oily skin and I know a lot of times when people go on really intensive acne medicine it can flip the actual skin type and I don't want to have to manage dry skin. Um, I am totally comfortable managing my oily skin. I just want to do something about a little bit of the texture and a little bit of the 
old acne marks that I have. So those colors actually, when I blend them out, they look very similar. Now the darker one, I'm sure I can build that up a little bit more and get a little bit more intensity and I might as we go along, but just my overall impression of putting these two shadows on my eyes right next to each other, they look very similar. So I'm gonna go back in with that dark one and I'm just gonna connect down here and then maybe try to darken this up. But I do have that dark shimmer that I can darken up the outer V with. And so I'm just laying down kind of the framework for where I want my look to go. And then we can kind of work from there. But if you guys have done any sort of like retexturing treatments or anything like that, like tell me what you've done and what you feel like works and is worth it. Because uh, I am interested in you guys' experience. And this, again, is not anything about me wanting to meet a certain beauty standard. This is something that I just want to do for myself. Because when I'm putting on my products, I want them to look the best they can. Um, and, of course, if I do ever get anything done, I would let you guys know. Because, obviously, my face would change. So you guys would be seeing different texture in my videos and in my get ready with me's so of course I would be forthcoming um, about what I want to do I think that I've told you guys before that I've considered doing some filler I've considered doing some Botox and again that is just for me that is not necessarily for me wanting to look any certain way so I'm going in with a little bit lighter of the matte under the eyes and this is why I like to do my eyes before my concealer and before anything else because I can be a little sloppy with it and sometimes when I take my shadow down underneath my eyes it does hide a little bit of those wrinkles under there and I need less concealer right up to my lash line so I don't get a bunch of concealer kind of pulling in those areas but this these two these two shades are pulling very raspberry and again look at me I look sickly at this point but they are pulling very very raspberry now I am gonna pull in my cream single here just because I want to blow this out a little bit and so I'm dipping into the lighter matte and then dipping into the cream single and kind of mixing them to get a lighter shade just so I can kind of buff out and blow out the edges of this look. I like a very blended look. I don't like a stark, um, I think geometric or more editorial. I do like my looks to be a little bit more blown out. So we're gonna do that and this EO5 from Nakia Joy is perfect. Oh my goodness, that is such, a, that's a better blend. You guys can already see that we're not having those just stark colors on my eyes. So, but this is the new and improved kind of matte formula from Natasha Denona. So it is, I mean, the blend on it is wonderful. I don't see any patchiness. Uh, those two colors do blend into each other. And that can be a good thing and that can be a bad thing. It can be a good thing because, of course, it makes our looks a little bit more seamless. But then it can be a bad thing because I feel like we're getting two colors that end up blending into the same thing in the same palette. But do I have... Yes, I do have my glitter glue. So now I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do with my shimmers. So I do have... I feel like I have the three different textures. So this one here is going to be sparklier and it has, oh, there's my camera, right right there, camera. Let me do that. So this one here is gonna be our sparkly one. The one next to it is a little bit, it's still a shimmer, but it's not as impactful. And then that dark purple is loaded with uh, sparkle and glitter. So we will see what we can come out with. But I probably, what I'm gonna end up doing is putting um, what was it pixie or Dixie Dixie on the lid with that dark purple in the outer corner and then the more satin um, Shimmer I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the lower lash line That's probably how that is going to play out, but we are going to use our glitter glue and get that on the eyes 
All right, the glitter glue is on and it's getting tacky. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna actually separate these in my palette just because I wanna get my fingers into them and I don't wanna dip into multiple shades with my fingers. So we're gonna go into Dixie and get that on my finger. I feel like you lose the shift under direct light, but we'll see what it looks like on Okay, the blue comes through on the lid. I don't, this is, this is coming close to Earthshine. I might have to swatch them next to each other, but it does have that beautiful purple-blue shift to it that I love out of Earthshine. But we will see how this looks with the finished look. And then like I said, I'll swatch Earthshine and this one together. I am gonna take the uh, EO1, which is a, a blender, but it has a point to it. And I'm gonna go into our dark purple here, and we're gonna get that on the outer corner and build up a little bit. I kinda do see a lot of similarities between this one and It's My Pleasure, and I do feel like this would do really well to replace It's My Pleasure um, when I am done with that palette, but we will see how this wears and how everything stacks up against each other so that is in there and the main reason that I do now I could have sprayed that that dark purple but we have fallout I have dark purple kind of specks all over my cheeks so this is why I do one layer of foundation first and then don't do the rest of my face yet because that purple it is all the way across my nose like if I tamped all that down I would have purple freckles that is where we're at but I'm going to take a little bit of that dark purple and just pat it on to get a little bit more impact. All right, that's what I like. And then we'll kind of reinforce some of that with our EO5, just blending that sparkle into the crease and letting it meet that matte. I don't mind putting sparkle into my outer V and my crease out here. I think that it creates a really pretty blend. But you can just go back over and then where these two meet, we're gonna do a little, little roughing up and we'll get a little bit more of Dixie on the brush and kind of just go over that border where they meet and then that border disappears. Perfect. All right, so I think I'm not going to put this kind of more satin shimmer on my look yet until I get to the point where I can smoke something out on my lower lash line. So we're going to leave it at those four shadows right now. And let me just do this and kind of wipe that purple. Oh, yeah, we ended up with purple all over the place. And this is what I normally do with my foundation. So I'm also trying to see how this tier tier foundation kind of reacts to me smudging it after it's already dried down. So that, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but of course, you know, we have our fallout gone. But now's the point where I go in and I put on another layer of foundation just to kind of reinforce certain areas where I want a little bit more coverage. And I'm to the point where I don't like this. I don't like that it it, it, I, it applies too much product for my liking and too much product where I can't control it. So I'm gonna not care about the half and half. I'm just gonna worry about my makeup looking okay today. So I'm gonna go back in with my sponge and pick some up out of the cushion and we're just going to go back over some of those areas that we had to brush away some fallout and kind of go back over where I have a little bit more redness and a little bit more discoloration that I want to cover. 
So at this point right now with the foundation, the side that I originally applied with the sponge, this kind of looks like what Estee Lauder would look like if I just applied it with a sponge. This side does look a little bit heavy and cakey because I applied it with the sponge that was provided. So that is not going to be the way that I enjoy applying this, but what I'm going to do with dog hair still invading my face. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put on concealer and brows and my other cream products and I'll come back and show you guys what it looks like before I powder down. All right, so I have the rest of my cream products on and I have my brows on, which my, <laughs> I always look really weird until I have the rest of my makeup on because I have pale Uncle Fester face with like a dramatic eye look. But I am gonna add a little bit of eyeliner to this. So we're gonna take my little tiny Urban Decay Vice and we're gonna add a little bit of definition by the lash line but with the foundation i think with everything else on it has kind of leveled out a little bit it's dried down a little bit my concealer added the coverage that i need to kind of correct my redness so it's looking okay it does feel a little bit drier than what i'm used to and maybe that's because i'm not able to mix my other products into this that i usually do to add glow and moisture back to a more matte foundation but let me go ahead and i'll pop on some eyeliner and then we will powder down and we'll see what this foundation is looking like with the powder on it as well and again i'm doing my makeup like i normally do so i'm not changing any steps. I'm just seeing how this foundation works with my routine. All right, liner is on. I did a little bit of a wing and I have my Nikia Joy powder. I took the sifter out because I'm almost done with this one. So we're going to powder down like I normally do. And I kind of have abandoned the triangle puffs and I've gone back to really enjoying using just my sponge to powder. So I pick up powder on my sponge, I tap a lot of the excess off, excess, excess off on the lid that I can use later, and then we are gonna go in and powder this down like I normally would. Oh, the vanilla in this powder smells so, so good. I swear this powder can fix all of my problems in my life. So it looks beautiful powdered down. I will say I like how I was not, words Erin, I didn't have to use as much powder because I feel like this foundation sets itself, like it is already setting down on its own. But of course I know within, you know, an hour or so my oils will start to come through. So I want to powder everything down and have a nice, base that we are starting with. So I feel like we're in a good spot. Actually, now that I have powder under my eyes, let me go ahead and add my under eye. Actually, I feel like I didn't get under this eye. It looked a little bit shiny still. And if I'm going to go in and add some more color to my lower lash line, I want that to be nice and smooth and powdered down. So we're going back in to my little palette here. I'm going to reinforce the like pinky color as my shirt is covered in powder, which now that I'm covered in powder, but this is a super natural shirt. Love it. They did a campaign years and years and years ago. And so I got this shirt during one of their like merch campaigns. So like I said, I'm going into the lighter matte right here and we're going to just reinforce this color underneath the lash line. Very lightly, I'm using very light pressure because I don't want really intense color. I just want to be able to blow that out a little bit and really see the color. Now I'm gonna do a little bit on the outer V just because I made a pretty big wing. I want this 
color to kind of fade up. And I usually do connect my blush with my eye look, so we'll be able to see that as well. But going back in with the Nikia Joy EO5, because that is what I really like for kind of buffing these edges out. So we have a really nice blend, but I still do need to use this other shade right here. And I'll have the shades popping up down below. I don't wanna have to open the palette over and over again, but it's not sparkly, it's just shimmery, but it's still beautiful. That'd actually make a really pretty inner corner. We will see. But what brush do I want to use to get that on there? I'm gonna grab another brush for that because I want a more detailed little brush. Okay, so I grabbed an M213 from Morphe. So it's just this tiny little blender right here. And we're gonna go into that more satiny shimmer. And we're gonna just pop that right on the lower lash line, just as a little bit of a sparkle down there. And I think I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna put this in my inner corner to have that purple highlight in there. I don't mind having a little bit of a colorful sparkle in there. And I'm gonna use, this is typically the brush that I use to do my inner corner highlighter. This has rubbed off. This is a Sephora brush. I don't know what it is, but it's kind of like a tapered blender. And so I love using this to get in that crease and just take my, whatever my inner corner highlight is, I love taking it up and just blending it into that crease because it creates a really nice effect of just connecting everything. But I actually really like that. Actually, let me brush a little bit of some fallout, but I really like the effect of this on the inner corner and because it doesn't have a shift to it it doesn't have like a darker shift so you're not going to necessarily darken that area like if it was something that that had a little bit of a duochrome or a darker base on it so I really like how that looks and again I'm just gonna feather and blend that out on the lower lash line to kind of disperse some of that sparkle because I don't mind having a little bit of sparkle underneath the eyes to catch some light. So I am getting little dark fallout pieces, maybe from the liner that I scrubbed into my tight line or my lower lash line, or maybe that is from the darker purple, but we're gonna brush that away. Now that I'm powdered down, I'm gonna put on my powder um, products like my bronzer, my blush, and I'm using my regular uh, Project Pan bronzer. I do have my mood exposure from Hourglass because this is a nice cool tone purple blush, so we will use this. And then I just have my regular highlighter palette that I am using. And actually, I am running out of memory space, so let me go ahead and clear my memory card, and then I will be back for the rest of the makeup application. All right, memory card is formatted, and we are back in business. So like I said, let me go ahead and put on my powder products. I have my bronzer, I have my mood exposure blush, and then my highlighter. So let me go ahead and get everything done on my face, and then we will come back and chit chat about how everything looks, what I think about the five shades that I've used out of the Roxa palette. So let me go ahead and get the rest of this done, and I will be right back. All right, so we have our final look, and the skin is looking 
again on this side where I used the little pad that comes with the foundation I feel like this side is looking a little bit heavier a little bit cakier a little bit drier and on this side which I used my wet DSMD shop sponge this side is looking a little bit better this side is looking a little bit more presentable to where I would be comfortable going out with my skin looking like this so it is like it dries all the way down um, I almost feel like it settles into the pores a little bit more on this side and I think that's just because there's more product on my skin on this side compared to on this side so for me personally I, I don't really need to carry a foundation with me and have like a way to apply it on the run so I'm totally cool with using this and with using my regular sponge and this is something that I will continue to use it's actually rolled into my deck of panning right now for 10 uses so I better use it I need to do 10 uses on this before I can roll it out but I think that cushion foundations is not something that's going to replace regular liquid foundations for me Number one, I kind of feel like you get a whole lot less product in here. Yeah, again, this is a mini, but you're only getting 0.15 ounces. And a regular standard foundation is going to run you one ounce or more. The, um, the one... The one that I love, the NARS Soft Complete Matte Foundation, I think you get like 1.7 fluid ounces in that for like $40 versus 0 0.15. So one tenth of the product is in here than in the NARS Foundation. And I think even the mini is like $13 to $15. So you really have to realize that I would need to buy 10 plus we'll say 11 of these to get the same amount of product in the NARS foundation. So even if we're looking at the cost of this product, it is not very cost efficient. And so that is something where I'm glad I tried it. I'm glad that it's like, oh, the new thing, which I don't typically buy into hype. I just really wanted to try a Korean um cushion foundation since I was placing that order on yes style and I'm glad I tried it but there's not anything that would draw me to go back to that time and time again so that is my wrap up about tier tier again I'm, I'm gonna leave all of my equipment up and maybe pop back in here after we go out to vote and maybe we will grab some lunch while we're out there but I'll try to pop back in to show you guys what this looks like after a couple hours of wear especially because I'm not going to blot and I won't repowder but I did want to go ahead and look at the comparisons of the Ruxa palette with my actual It's My Pleasure palette. So actually, let me put my It's My Pleasure back together because uh, I do have my shades pulled out here. So let me put this back together. Okay, so let's look at these two. I do see quite a few simil similarities, but of course not everything is gonna match up because we have a 15 pan versus a nine pan. But I think there is some things that are very, very close. And what I was thinking about with Concord, which was the darker purple that I got in my bingo, is the Dew or Doe shade. So those are different. So this is Natasha Denona, this is ColourPop. So those are very different. But I feel like you almost get the same like feeling. And let's just look at Chiclet, which is the darker. And see, Chiclet in It's My Pleasure is also darker. So Natasha Denona is in the middle, and then the ColourPop ones are on either side. So no exact matches, but I bet that if you if you mixed Do or Do, and then also um, what was that one? Chiclet together, you'd probably get something very similar to Concord. So let me wipe my fingers off. And then, like I said, I really want to look at Earthshine versus Dixie. So Earthshine is on this finger, Dixie's on this finger. So I feel like you do get a little bit of similarities, but Earthshine comes through as a little bit more blue and it has more so Dixie does not have as 
evident of a pink base where Earthshine has a pink base. So Earthshine is over here, Dixie is right next to it. So I almost feel like at least the Earthshine out of this palette, because the Earthshine from the single from ColourPop is trash. I mean, I've like yelled that from the rooftops on my channel, but definitely we do have a different base pigment in Earthshine, and then also we do have, I feel like it is a little bit more reflective, even though Dixie did go on the lids beautifully. Of course, this is what's on my lids. So it is a beautiful shade. It does have a beautiful sparkle. You really do get that impact on the lids. And so again, you always can't trust a swatch. But as far as any other similarities, let me look at Brink and Bare Minimum. Again, ColourPop has a lot more pigment. So this is Brink and this is Bare Minimum. So again, very different, but look at Brink. Ooh, look at that coming through with the, with the sparkle. But again, when you're looking at it in a swatch, it's not that impressive. So that's Brink from Natasha Denona. But I feel like if you put this on your eyes with a look and with a glitter glue, you're going to get that sparkle. You're going to get that intensity. So I think that these are, I don't even think these are, these are doppelgangers. We'll put it that way. So you know how they say that everybody has like X amount of doppelgangers walking around this earth, people that kind of look like you, they could pass as maybe like a sibling. I feel like they're not related. They're not blood related, but they might be doppelgangers of each other. So definitely that is why I love this color story and why I have loved working on It's My Pleasure this year. And I do want to kind of, because I have, them I'm trying not to knock anything over I have my special shades in my purple palette here and I think that I just want to let me see let me actually do it on my palm since my palm will be clean but I have let's see what I have here I know I have my two from I'm not even I'm not gonna do glass slipper because this one goes so blue that we're not gonna have anything to compare it to but I think I am gonna do from Terra Moon we're gonna do Haley's Comet and we're gonna do Rosette I'm gonna swatch these two. Oh my god these are so soft and so so pretty so Haley's Comet and Rosette I think I am gonna swatch Earthshine one more time since that's my that's my shade that I compare everything to. So let's get some of Earthshine onto here and not drop this palette again. And then let me do a couple shades from Ruxa. So we'll do Dixie again. And then let me do Flutter. And I'm just gonna be covered in sparkles again and I do not even care. Okay, so the Natasha Denona shades are swatched over here. And then over here we have Haley's Comet, we have Rosette, and we have Earthshine. And I think that, you know, Angelica Nequist says it best, that Natasha Denona is a good formula for mainstream, but I don't think that she can touch what Indy is doing. And so if we just look at the impact of Haley's Comet and Rosette from Terra Moon, and the difference in just, and I, I did like, I did the same amount of like kind of taps ins or scrubs. I did the same amount of like running over. So it's not like I did a week swatch of Natasha Denona, but I just feel like the indie companies are really pulling through with that impact. And it's sad because, and again, the, never trust a swatch, but the swatches of Natasha Denona, they are pretty. Like they do catch the light, like especially when you get a little bit more into the shadows of things, they will catch the light. But if you want that bam in your face type of impact, I think indie is the way to go. I think that Natasha Denona plays it safe by having these beautiful sparkles, but there's not that base pigment that we get from indie shadows. So there's not that kick on the base that we actually see these things show up because I mean just look at this is this is what is it uh Haley's Comet and Rosette from Terra Moon just look and that's me like tapping into these shades 
absolutely stunning. Like you cannot argue with how beautiful these shades are and just the impact that they have when you swatch them. Look at those. They just catch the light and have so much impact and so much sparkle that I think that Natasha Nona plays it safe by having more of these topper formulas. And so you can, I guess, get a little bit more of a wearable look out of them rather than that huge impact bam in your face, you know, blinding from space type of sparkle that we see from these indie palettes. But um, I think that, you know, of course, you have to figure out what's best for you and where you want to spend your money as far as, you know, investing in Natasha Denona versus investing in indie shadows, because either way, you are going to be spending some money on some powders. But I know that, and I'll cover this in my, this thing gets so filthy. I will cover this in my beauty budget, but I was able to use some points on the Natasha Denona website to get this. So I actually got $20 off of that palette, which was helpful. Um, but it still is, the Natasha Denona palettes still are investment palettes because you are spending quite a bit of money. But let me wipe some sparkles off, even though I'm going to be covered in sparkles. So it is what it is. But I think that, I mean, there was no way that I wasn't going to buy this palette. I think that we all know this. There is no way that I was going to pass this up. Um, I've been asking for a Leela palette. I've been asking for this for a while. So I think that this is something that definitely, like it was missing in her catalog. And I think that this does do something different than love because I never saw love as a like replacement or companion to the it's my pleasure so I feel like it is the it's my pleasure that has been elevated it's the older sister you know she's moved out of the house she's now in college she's learning about herself she's experimenting with things so that is where I kind of feel like the Ruxa palette fits so that's my overall kind of understanding of where we're at all right, I'm back for a little bit of a check-in and it is, oh, I don't have my watch on me. It's 5.30, almost six o'clock in the evening and I put my makeup on, I think around noon. So I'm only six hours in, uh, but I did go out and I did vote. So I left the house at least. But for um, looking in, so I have my simple human mirror and so I do have five times um, magnification on this so I definitely can see up close and personal and I will say it's settled into my lines where typically all of my makeup settles into and good lord does this happen to anybody else so I have a very thin upper lip but my bottom lip is kind of plump but it turns down a lot so I always get lipstick right there on my chin where my lip hits my chin when I eat something. So I ate an apple, which you know, I'm probably scared of those because of chipping my dang tooth. But I ate an apple and I ended up with a little bit on the bottom of my chin there. But it has broken down in the normal places that my foundation breaks down around my nose just because my allergies have been acting up today. So I've been rubbing my nose a little bit more than usual. Well, not not more than usual, the same amount as usual. So my makeup always breaks down around my nose. But I do think that it looks better on the side that I used my wet sponge. So I am sticking by that after having this on for six hours. It does look a little bit more heavy and cakey on the side that I use the dry sponge from the compact. So I think from now on, whenever I use the Tear Tear Foundation, I am just gonna go ahead and use the, um, just my regular wet sponge that I'm used to. It does look a little bit better and less cakey on the side, but as far as like on my areas of my face that are not my problem areas, there's no breakdown on this. Like it still looks really good on my forehead. It settled into my 11s a little bit, um, but as far as along my cheek and along my jaw, it's still there. Um, my chin is an area that we wears away really quickly and I did sit down and I edited the rest of this video so I probably was touching my chin a little bit more but like I said it hasn't broken down anywhere on this side that a normal foundation even like an Estee Lauder that breaks down in the same areas. Like I said, it looks a little bit heavier and a little bit cakier in this area here. Like it's kind of settled into my lines around my mouth. 
And then of course I do have a little bit of my active breakouts here. So it's clinging to those dry patches a little bit, but I knew it was gonna do that because it is a drier formula and I was not able to add my like hydrating um, products into it like I do with my regular foundation. So I think overall it is a good foundation if you have your expectations met about it and if you are applying it in a way that works for you. So the coverage is beautiful. The finish is beautiful. I'm going to play around with it and I'll give you guys even more of an update during my next deck of panning because I will have some more uses under my belt. And But I will say for this video as far as the wrap up, it's, it's okay, but I, I went back and as I was editing, I, I think that this will go in after that other part, but the fact that I said that I would need 11 of those compacts to make up the amount of foundation that I would get from NARS, so if I'm just doing weird math in my head, that's almost $150 or more in foundation buying those compacts plus all that plastic for a $40 one bottle of foundation from NARS. So it is a no brainer for me as far as what I will be going back to. I think even if the tier tier foundation was like the best I've tried, I probably still wouldn't go back to it because of the replacement cost and then just the amount of plastic packaging that goes into it versus either a glass bottle that you can recycle or just a one plastic bottle of like a NARS foundation where you get 1.5 to 1.7 ounces of product. So try it if you must, but I feel like this is a viral product that you can skip over and just use the foundations that work for you that come in a bottle for cheaper in the long run. So that's kind of my like wrap up on it. As far as the eyeshadow, we are still holding in good. We have some good sparkle on our lids. I have a little bit of creasing, but I always crease. There is not a eyeshadow that does not crease on me. So really what I would usually do is I could just come in with my finger and dab over the areas where the shadow kind of was in my creases and I'm perfectly fine now. I have a glitter back all over my lids so we are looking good. So everything else is great. The palette was fun um, and I hope that you guys enjoyed my little cuts of me doing my makeup with my music on. I, I talk a little bit about how much I like music but like music is always going on in my household like I listen to music as I make dinner and like put on different playlists and like dance around the kitchen while I'm making dinner like I always I put on music in the morning to kind of get me hyped for the day and get my energy up so music is so important to me it keeps me going so you guys got a little bit of a sneak peek into my playlist that I'm loving right now. A mix of a lot of different things. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that little sneak peek into my music tastes as well. But I'm going to go ahead and go. I'm going to make dinner, which means that I get to put on a fun playlist while I am making dinner. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this little check-in. And like I said, I will give a more thorough review on the tier tier during my deck of panning and then hopefully by my next update for no pan left behind I'll have used every shade in the Ruxa palette and I will have a more in-depth review for that as well but I feel like tier tier foundation you can skip over it Ruxa palette if that is your color story if that is your jam I don't think you'll go wrong but I will go ahead and turn it back over to the other Aaron to go ahead and do the wrap up for this video. I'm going to film an outro right now just in case I don't get around to popping back in for a wear test. I hope that I will, Aaron, please. Please be a good YouTuber and do it. But otherwise, I am going to encourage you guys to do all the things. Go ahead and hit a thumbs up on this video. Let me know that you are enjoying my content. Make sure to subscribe. So I know I am gaining more subscribers, which I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. But if you are new or you are lurking, then consider hitting that button down there and subscribing to my channel. It is free for you guys to do, but it does help me out a lot to get my content out to other people that would find 
my certain corner of the internet entertaining. So also make sure to drop me a comment down below. I love our conversations down there. I love hearing from you guys. How's your life? How are things going? Did you guys pick up the Ruxa palette? Have you tried the Tear Tear Foundation? But I would say if you have dry skin, stay far, far, far away from the red compact. You will hate it. So that's what I have to say about that. But if you have oily skin, I would say just, you know, go in maybe with your regular wet sponge versus and the uh, little sponge that comes in the compact. But that is my thoughts. Drop me that comment. Let me know how you guys are doing. Um, I did get a little cameo of Malcolm in the beginning of this video, so I might have popped it in up there. But um, even though he is kind of going downhill, he is still with us. I really don't know if we're going to make it to his birthday because that would be two weeks from yesterday as I'm filming this. And I don't know if he'll get there, but I did go ahead. I already bought him a birthday cake. It is in the freezer. So if we need to have an early birthday for him, we will, we will have a celebration, but definitely we are still spoiling him and making sure that he is comfortable, but he is letting us know that he is slowing down. So I'm very thankful for the extra time that I have had with him. I knew it was borrowed time, but definitely I'm not going to like make him hang around and you know, make him extremely uncomfortable just so he can reach his birthday for my feelings. I'm definitely not going to do that. But you guys know when it is his time, I'll do a community post and just let you guys know. Um, but thank you so much always for your prayers and thoughts on my little guy. I really do appreciate you guys and the love and the outpouring that you guys have been able to provide for me and my fur babies and my family. So thank you times a million. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sign off. I will try to pop in some wear tests. If it seems choppy, it's because I'm not used to popping back in into videos and kind of like putting in wear tests. So forgive me. This is my first time kind of doing that. But hopefully you guys found this entertaining and enjoyable. But I'm going to go ahead and go and I'm going to go vote. Hopefully you guys are going out to do that as well, but I do appreciate each and every one of you for being here. I hope that you guys all have a beautiful day, and I'll catch you in my next one.